Welcome to Microsoft Build. I'm Swati. I'm a product manager in the Loop team, and I have Muthu with me, who is an engineer in the third-party content experience team. In this session, Muthu and I'll go over how Loop and Copilot can help you enhance your engineering team efficiency and how you can build adaptive card-based Loop components for M365. Let's get started. In the next 30 minutes, we'll be covering the following topics. What is Loop and what are Loop components? How project teams can amplify product development with Loop components, why build Loop components, M365 and Copilot extensibility and how to build Loop components. Muthu will give you a detailed code walkthrough and showcase a demo app he has been working on. What is Loop? Let's watch a short video on Loop. Say goodbye to the frustration of jumping between apps and losing track of documents and ideas. Microsoft Loop transforms the way you work, so you can think, plan, and create together like never before. Loop is made up of workspaces, pages, and components. Let's break it down. Create together with shared workspaces for each of your projects. On the Loop homepage, you can access all your existing workspaces and create new ones. In a Loop workspace, you can bring everything you need for your project together in one place. To kick off a workspace, Loop can even do the searching for you, making it easy to add existing project-related information and organize it into pages. Continue adding to your workspace as your project evolves and organize it the way you want. Loop pages are flexible canvases where you can react, comment, and build on each other's ideas. Notifications help you track the things you care about and focus on what matters, all while staying in the flow of your work. Copilot in Loop helps you ideate and co-create. Get inspired with AI-powered contextual suggestions to transform the way you create together. Don't let app barriers slow your project down. Easily share information with people outside your workspace with Loop Components. Components are portable pieces of content that stay in sync across all the places they have been shared, no matter where they are updated. You can share components and create new ones, like lists, tables, paragraphs, and more, across your favorite Microsoft 365 apps. You're always in control because it's easy to see where components were shared and who has access. However you work, wherever you work, Loop enables teams to think, plan, and create together like never before. Loop allows project teams to keep all their content in one shared space, making it easy to collaborate and build on each other's ideas. Engineering teams can co-author technical documentations with code snippets and visuals and track the overall progress of the project. As they do so, they can create visuals and trackers within the app or insert live content from third-party apps. With Loop Components, you're always connected to the Microsoft ecosystem to stay productive. Loop allows you to work in any M365 hub. While Loop App provides a dedicated shared workspace to collect all the content relevant to a project, Loop components make it easier to share live content in chats and emails and collaborate on it. With the third-party adaptive card-based Loop components, users can bring live external content to M365 and collaborate on it. If you're a developer and still wondering why you should be building Loop components, let's quickly go over the value props. With Loop components, we want to always uphold four promises for our users. The content is live, that is, it always stays up to date across the ecosystem for all the users. It is interactive and allows user to perform meaningful actions from within the component, thus helping them avoid continuous context switching. It can be embedded and it is portable across M365. Currently, AC-based Loop components are generally available in Teams and are soon coming to Outlook in M365 Copilot. They'll also be coming to Loop App this year. Besides the embedded card experience, developers can enable staged views, allowing users to see a full page view of the underlying content 
from the adaptive card in a modal window. A commonly asked question is, if building adaptive card-based loop components require learning how to use a new loop developer platform. No, you do not have to learn a new platform. Adaptive card-based loops can be built using the M365 extensibility platform. App integration in M365 through message extensions help users search, embed, and share external content, leading to quicker workflow completions in Teams and Outlook. These workflows and interactions are typically triggered via buttons and forms, allowing users to search or initiate actions in an external system right from the Compose message area or from an email message. The outcomes of these interactions are delivered back to the client in the form of a richly formatted card. Loop components can be built using existing M365 platform and low-code adaptive card framework. You build ones and enable the experience across M365 hubs and loop app. With the introduction of Copilot for M365, the game has changed. Users can now le leverage natural language input to invoke a message extension search function by passing the need for specific user interface commands. In essence, your user's words become the catalyst for Copilot's actions, calling the appropriate plugin for their request. A user can ask about what's in stock for a product, or an engineer can fetch all the issues assigned to them. M365 Copilot is designed for the needs of the enterprise. Copilot automatically inherits your organization's security, compliance, and privacy policies for Microsoft 365. Data is managed in line with our current commitments, and Copilot large language models are not trained on your tenant data. With message extensions for Copilot, adaptive card-based loop components can also be enabled in M365 Copilot. Now I'll hand it over to Muthu to do a code walkthrough and take you through a transformational journey, where he will show you how a static adaptive card experience limited to teams can be easily enhanced to make it interactive and an N365 component. Thank you, Swati, for your insights into Loop components. Have brilliantly highlighted their role in amplifying team productivity. Now I'll demonstrate this impact through a code walkthrough transforming a static adaptive card in Teams into an interactive Microsoft 365 component. Let's explore this enhancement together. Let's begin by examining the current experience of link unfurling feature in Work Item Tracker app. This app is merely a representative example I've selected for demonstration purposes. As illustrated here, the app presents a static user interface which, while functional, comes with its own set of constraints, such as absence of dynamic interaction and inability to display information that is up to date. Now, imagine transforming this static experience into something much more dynamic. This is where the adaptive card-based loop components comes into play. Let's take a look at the enriched version of the static card. As evident here, it now features multiple points of interaction, such as changing assign to, changing status, adding comments to a discussion, and an action button to save all the changes. And is also now easy portable across various Microsoft 365 hubs using the copy button at the top right. Now let's see how I, how I transform the static Teams app into a fully functional Microsoft 365 app. To do this, I've gone through these five crucial steps. First, have a set of the necessary configurations to enable the bot to serve across Microsoft 365 hubs. Then, implement the changes needed at the app manifest. Made the required modifications to the adaptive card payload for enhanced functionality. Added the necessary analysts to the bot to cater to the request from Microsoft 365 hubs. Tested the changes by sideloading the app and resubmitting it for validation. Let's dive into each step one by one. To begin, I tackled two key configurations that were necessary for the bot to work effortlessly across various Microsoft 365 hubs. 
ensuring a smooth and unified experience. First was to integrate the Microsoft 365 channel into my bot registration on the Azure book. I needed to access my bot registration for the work item tracker app and navigate to settings. From there, I selected channels, then picked Microsoft 365 channels from the available channels list. After clicking apply, I've checked to confirm that Microsoft 365 channel appeared in the list of channels associated with my bot. Next one involved authorizing the Loop app and other hubs in my registration of on the Azure portal. I accessed my app registration for the Work Item Tracker app and navigated to Manage that I selected Expose an API section to add a client IDs to the authorized client application. I selected Add a Client Application button. I ensured that Access as the User scope was selected and filled in the client ID of the application. After clicking Add Application button, I checked to confirm the application that I added appeared in the list of authorized client applications. I ensured the app manifest for my application was properly adjusted, which included updating the app manifest version and schema properties to versions 1.13 or higher. Third phase was a deep dive into refining the payload of my adaptive card aiming for a design that delivers exceptional quality and interactivity. I dedicated a significant portion of my time to this stage, as I would advise others to do the same. Investing ample time in this phase is crucial to ensure the end result is a user-friendly experience with high level of usability. I modified the adaptive card schema version to 1.6 as this is the minimum required version that qualifies an adaptive card to be utilized as a loop component. This update ensures that the adaptive card in my app are compliant with the latest standards and can freely leverage the loop component's capabilities. I enhance the user engagement by incorporating necessary input elements and an action.execute action dial, which saves the changes that users make. Employing unique verbs for each action facilitates the identification of the specific operation to be carried out by the bot service. Then I've implemented a refresh action, which is a variant of the action.execute action type. This is designed to ensure that the information displayed to the user is always up to date, reflecting the most recent data. It's a proactive feature that enhances the bot's reliability, providing users with confidence that they are accessing the latest information. Subsequently, I integrated the metadata.webURL property, which is a unique URL that identifies the adaptive card. Typically, this is the same URL utilized for the link unfurling. This particular property is the key to unlocking the portability feature of a loop component, allowing for seamless transition and recognition across different platforms. A handler named on adaptive card invoke needs to be implemented to handle any action activity from the adaptive card. As I have added two actions, save and refresh, these events needs to be added. As I previously highlighted, I utilized the verb within the action to distinguish the type of action that has been triggered, allowing me to take appropriate steps based on the distinction. Whether it's to save the work item or to retrieve the most recent details of the work item. Final step here was to ensure things really work well by sideloading the app and testing card actionability, refresh functionality, and portability of the card across different Microsoft 365 hubs. I did not resubmit the app for validation as I have just picked the work item tracker app for demo purposes, but in your case, you should resubmit the app for validation and publishing. 
Here is the little demo that I have created to demonstrate the adaptive cut based loop component capabilities with the demo app that I have transformed. So this is a small conversation between the feature crew that works on some feature main mark as external. So Joy is the UX designer, I am the developer, and Siddhartha is the feature crew manager. Here is a scenario. I want to update the latest status about the feature to my manager who prefers Outlook for communication. It's a simple and common scenario, and let's see how adaptive card based loop components help here. I started by composing an email after updating the details. I grabbed the work item link from the web page and pasted it to the mail to unfold into a loop component. I noticed that the status is not updated and the assets are also not attached to the work item. I send the email with the confidence that by the time my manager views the email, it would get updated. After sending the email, I just copied the loop component using the copy button at the top right and sent the message in a feature crew group chat asking Sujoy to update the assets in the work item. Sujoy, on the other hand, wants to add the assets to the work item, navigates to the work item web page and uploads the asset and confirms the same with the comment in the work item. Once I receive the confirmation from Sujoy for uploading the assets, I just mark the work item as complete. After updating the status, the loop component gets updated with the latest information in all places in Outlook, in Teams, and in the web, under the work item web page. Now, when my manager looks at the email that I've sent, he would get the updated status of the work item. As we wrap up the session, I'd like to reflect on the journey we have taken to elevate my work item tracker Teams app to a Microsoft 365 application. To a cache and configuration, manifest updates, payload revisions, the addition of request handlers, and finally validating and resumming. I'm thankful for the opportunity to share this journey with you, and I'm excited for the continuous innovation that lies ahead. We are not just creating the apps, we are shaping the experiences that redefine productivity and collaboration. Thank you.